Hey everyone, welcome to the Warcraft Brew. My name is Quissy. And I'm Pasta Face. In this series, we're going to cover everything that goes on in the realm of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. As a classic enthusiast, that's primarily what I will be focusing on. And I'll be talking more along the lines of Retail WoW, so in this case, 8.2. But first, for those who are unfamiliar with who we are, we're going to talk a little bit about our backgrounds. I started making YouTube videos in 2016 um, when Warlords of Draenor was out for World of Warcraft. Um, I started live streaming on YouTube as well. I did that for about a year, and then I moved to Twitch just about a year ago too. I uh, just got partnered on Twitch last month during the classic beta. I've been playing World of Warcraft since vanilla. I started out with a prop paladin and somehow made it to level 60, primarily rated as a dwarf priest. And since vanilla, I've played every expansion up until uh, Battle for Azeroth. Um, I've played both factions, Horde and Alliance, and my main characters have switched back and forth between Paladin and Priest, but mostly Paladin. And I began playing around uh, 2005, 2006, during uh, vanilla, rolled on a Night Elf Hunter, and I pretty much played solo. I um, didn't do a lot of raids, I didn't do a lot of dungeons, um, because I was very socially awkward, and now I am a full-grown, socially awkward adult who uh, is trying to make up for those uh, mistakes in the past. <laughs> what, uh, what classes do you main? Currently, right now in retail, I main a uh, Night Elf Druid. I am a uh, Boomkin spec, as, uh, as the young people call it. <laughs> Boomkin's pretty OP right now. I isn't know, it? dude. Oh my god. I thought my uh, my damage meters were broken in the most recent raid because I was top. I was top DPS. I'm like, man, you know, like I've been playing beta for a little bit. Like maybe things aren't updated. No, turns out I was top DPS. So now that that's out of the way, in this episode, we're going to focus on our thoughts on the Classic WoW beta, which just ended recently. We had the opportunity to play for two months. Uh, we're also going to talk about patch 8.2, which came out a few weeks ago, and the Eternal Palace, which was released this week. And uh, speaking of the Eternal Palace, we're also going to briefly talk about the drama surrounding the Race to World First situation. So that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this episode. Subscribe. All right, so first the classic beta. Now, we had the opportunity to play the classic beta since it started, which was May 15th. That was uh, nearly two months ago. And um, we had an absolute blast. I mean, the, the gameplay felt so fluid and natural. It is, it is built on the 7.3.5 client. For us, a lot of it was kind of relearning how things were back in vanilla, especially because we'd been playing retail for so many years. So little things like you can have a failed attempt at gathering herbs, or you have to dismount before you get on a flight or cast a spell, things that we had to relearn in a way. So it definitely was a learning experience. For us, at least, it was like riding a bike. You know, every time that we opened the beta and experienced something, um, that was, you know, along the lines of vanilla content. It was like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, I, I remember that now. Mm. Um, the talent trees, you know, uh, buying uh, certain skills, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just all that kind of stuff. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, that's right. That was a thing back then. What would you say was the most challenging part of leveling? In my first experience of World of Warcraft, I had a Night Elf Hunter. In current uh, retail version, I am a, a Night Elf uh, Moonkin. But for classic release, I'm going to be rolling a uh, Human Warrior. The toughest thing for me was that there's really a, a more uh, power with numbers. So for for me to level alone, I have to be a little bit more meticulous in my pulling. Oh, yeah. and, you know what I pull and. Uh, not only just alone, but if we're running a dungeon too, because if I pull one too many, it's mm -hmm. it's game over. Well, I was I was also going to add on to that. Was was leveling in the Elwyn Forest kind of new to you as well? Because for me, that that was very familiar, having played human characters a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, you played a night elf, right. night elf I've, hunter. So I've always been night elf. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind so. of a learning curve for you too. A little bit, but you know, I mean, you find your root and you you find what works best. And mm. you know, it it really just kind of sinks into place. So that wasn't really as much of a struggle as it was, um, you know, really kind of being humbled in the sense of I am not as powerful starting out than I would be, you know, in the current version mm. uh, in, in retail. The most challenging thing for me leveling 
this might sound silly to some people, but was having the lack of bag space. Ooh. <laughs> like, we ran into so many issues with bag space. And even if you're if you're trying to speed level too, I feel like that kind of slowed us down a little bit because we'd have to pause to delete stuff in our bags. We weren't near any vendors. So we either had, yeah, we either had to delete stuff or trade each other stuff. Or if we had linen, we had to turn them into, fur, uh, we had to use first aid to turn them into bandages. Bag space is really something that I'm a little bit concerned about with leveling. Um, and that kind of ties into gold too. You have to buy your skills every other level. You have to put talent points in. I mean, putting talent points don't, doesn't cost any money, but the skills at every even level um, that you have to purchase, you may not always have enough gold silver, copper, to buy those skills. Every time we had to delete an item from our bag, I just like felt that <laughs> that skill money going away. Because there were a few times yeah. where we went to our trainers and we didn't have enough money to buy our skills. And I was like, oh, why did I delete that bear pelt? I'm sorry, I'm like veering off a little bit, no. but I just get so excited yeah. when I find a chest Absolutely. in classic, just because it could have a bag. It you could, know? Yeah, it could have a bag, it could have a green item. Right. Imagine getting a green item under level 10. Right. Like, that, that, that's amazing. Mm. We went crazy every time we saw a chest. <laughs> Maybe one of us should become a dwarf, uh, because they get that racial to find yeah. treasure. So, like, literally on your mini-map, you'll see a, a yellow dot when there's a treasure chest. <laughs> uh, you know, another thing I, I do want to add in terms of... Uh, going and, and playing in classic as opposed to retail is every piece of armor that you find along the way matters and it counts. Mm -hmm. I have never been so excited to get a gray piece before in oh, my yeah. entire life. Like, oh my god, dude, like I got like I got <laughs> some male armor. It's gray. Absolutely. Shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking about our kind of our thoughts on leveling in the beta. Um, we should mention, by the way, that we will be duo leveling together when Classic launches. We've been studying routes. Um, I will be a paladin. Right, and I'm going to be a warrior. And uh, we'll, we'll both be rolling human, so we'll be starting in the uh, Northshire Valley, uh, Elwyn Forest area. Paladin and warrior have a lot of synergy together. By, by like level 6 or level 8, we have so many of our bread and butter abilities. Um, yeah, like I have Devotion Aura, I have Blessing of Might. I have Holy Light, which is a heal. Uh, those are great for leveling with a warrior right off the bat. We get the extra armor, we get the extra attack power, we can heal. You have Battle Shout, which is more attack power. You have Rin, which is a dot. If something runs away, you also have Hamstring. Right. If something runs away, Charge is great too for tagging mobs. Right, initiating. Um, absolutely. Yep. One thing uh, during the, the last stress test, it was super crowded and we <laughs> foolishly <laughs> ventured into the mine south of Goldshire because uh, we had the quest to kill Goldtooth. And we're in the mine, and it's it's absolutely packed. You, you, there's nothing down there. There's no cobalts. And you spotted Goldtooth, like, oh, immediately. Right. Charged Goldtooth immediately as soon as he spawned. And we somehow got the tag and the kill on Goldtooth. I was... That was, like, one <laughs> memory where I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe we completed this quest. Because everything in this mine is dead. There was so many people it, it, <laughs> just walking through, just everybody passing through. It was like uh, it was like Grand Central Station, I swear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to our overall feelings of the beta, there definitely was a bit of nostalgia mixed in. But for me, it was more of like a coming home feeling as well. Initially, uh, you know, I wasn't playing the game right, you know, or, you know, I could only play a certain amount of the game and the other half was just completely undiscovered for me personally yeah. for all these years. So, you know, who who gets to say, you know, I, I messed up then and now I, could, I actually have another opportunity to right those wrongs, to make those connections, to not be so scared because somebody's looking for gold tooth as well, or somebody else is trying to kill Hogger the same time as me. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's not going to kill you just to ask somebody, hey, you know, uh, do you mind if I join your group? Yay, social anxiety. I think a lot of people feel that way about Classic too, and I'd be interested in hearing what you guys think about this. But uh, I've spoken to so many people in my uh, Twitch stream chat who are so excited to go back to Classic to do things that they never had the opportunity to do in vanilla. Uh, like for me personally, uh, my guild stopped raiding at AQ40, so I never got to kill C'Thun or most of the bosses in AQ40. I never got to see Naxxramas. Um, I, I did in Wrath of the Lich King, obviously, but 
Um, that's something that I'm really looking forward to doing, seeing that, that endgame uh, raid content in Classic. Uh, we made so many friends on the beta. We, we built a lot of relationships that uh, we're going to continue into launch, which is really exciting. We reported a lot of bugs. We, we tried to do our part in uh, testing it to its full capacity. <laughs> we definitely played a lot. Um, but yeah, we, we, we did report a good number of bugs. And we hope that we helped contribute to the development of it in a way. It's it's really honestly a dream come true of just, you know, st starting out, you know, in this tiny dark room, you know, on this rickety old computer, just trying to, you know, learn and play World of Warcraft just to think, you know, like, oh my god, like, I ended up helping out or you know being a part of the beta like just going from you know the very yeah. beginnings to where i'm at now it's it's honestly it's a dream come true it really and is. It, it's an honor and a privilege to have been a part of it so as for what's coming up next with classic the next stress test is going to be on july 25th to the 26th and that's going to be a global stress test so worldwide you'll have a chance and an opportunity to participate in the stress test if you have an active World of Warcraft subscription. We'll definitely be playing and we'll be dual streaming uh, for the stress test. We're gonna be probably practicing our leveling route because this, to me, in my opinion, is gonna be as close as we get to a simulated launch um, in August. So we, uh, we really gotta buckle down and uh, our primary objective is to get out of the starting zone as quickly as possible because we don't wanna get caught in that bottleneck. So if you guys do wanna see us, live streaming the stress test. It's going to be at twitch.tv slash quizzytv and uh, we'll have links in the description below where you can tune in. So now I'm going to be talking about retail. Uh, as you guys know and are well aware, 8.2 has come out and has released uh, Mechagon Island, the Mechagon Dungeon, uh, Najatar, and then the Eternal Palace Raid. So I'm going to be speaking a little bit to each and every part. Now that the beta has gone down, I will be playing 8.2, but up until this point, I have not logged into 8.2 yet. So I'm actually interested to, to check it out. Like new content is always cool to me. Uh, so I could formulate my own opinions on it as well. Uh, I've heard a lot of conflicting opinions from different people. Some people love it, some people hate it. Right, right, and you are definitely uh, well missed in those raids. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah, those current, uh, those, uh, current raids. Um, and dungeons as well. Um, so I, too, have just been solely playing beta, really, until uh, 8.2 was released, and I think it was on June 25th that it was released. Kind of, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of took a little bit of time walking, you know, from classic back into retail of, oh, that's right, you know, that's not a thing, this is a thing, you know, I have to worry about this, and this, you know, isn't as much of a concern as it is in classic. If you want to um, repair, you could just summon your mount. Yeah, I just got, I got a mount for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to give my opinion on the, uh, the two new zones. Um, I just want to remind everyone that it, it is an opinion and should not be taken as factual. Please go and play the content and enjoy it and, and learn it and experience firsthand for yourself. I do have to say um, I am a little bit more in favor of uh, Mechagon Island than I am uh, Najatar, only just because uh, Mechagon Island is a little bit more laid out and small and condensed as opposed to Najatar. Both are incredibly gorgeous and well designed, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there's really only one flight point um, in Mechagon Island, uh, and you really just have to roam and explore everything for yourself, which I, okay. I honestly, I do like in a small condensed place. Mm -hmm. And especially as soon as you get flying, really that's not gonna matter how many flight points there are. In Najatar, going back to, to Najatar now, um, there are really, two levels there's a, a top surface level and you know you get like all your coral and your sand and all that fun good stuff but then there is this kind of deeper layer this cavern layer which is creepy and like you know cool and both equally well designed but it is difficult to navigate just because mm. you know if, if you have a kill quest you kind of really don't know what 
level it's going to be on. Um, and it, and that's not the case for the entire um, land of, of Najatar. There are, you know, just some flat areas and then there are some upper and lower areas. Going into it, there is a little bit of a learning curve as opposed to Mechagon. How's the music? Oh my God. The music's good? <laughs> the music, dude, I, <laughs> they knock it out of the park every single time i, I agree have yeah. no idea how they do it yeah. i genuinely want to learn and and kind of watch them uh you know come up with this and uh and really kind of on the cutting room floor of okay you know this is mechagon island and you know mm -hmm. there are a whole bunch of you know misfits and uh rust bolt Rebe rebellion and uh. you know this is the theme of this place yeah and just transferring that into you know music yeah and it's just how do they do that i really want to know i want to kind of be a yeah. fly on the wall in that in that conversation yeah brilliant like i love the music from bfa so far Thoughts on unlocking flying, um, the process of unlocking it. Like, th mm. did you see, did you think that that was a little bit tedious in a way? Because I, I thought I heard some people complaining that you're kind of rep gated in a way. Like, you can't grind it out nonstop if you want to. Right, and, and that's, uh, that's really what I like about classic as opposed to retail is hmm. if I just want to no life something so hard I get it knocked out in like 48 hours yeah I could do that mm -hmm. is it healthy probably not but I'm an adult I could choose to do that you know there's only a certain amount of world quests you could do per day or you know per time hmm. um only really so many rares that you could kill in a day so there is a limit to that and I, I gotta be honest, I'm, I, personally, I'm not that fond of that. Mm. Um, if I have the time to play a game, I want to play that game. Whether it be two hours or, you know, a full day, I don't want the game to tell me, okay, you've played enough of me, it's time to stop. Yeah. Come back again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. If, if I'm enjoying your content, don't tell me to stop enjoying your content. Mm. Um, do you think they do that for for longevity in a way like because they want keep people to keep coming back oh absolutely absolutely I, in terms of spacing out their content mm. um but i i do have to say i i do think they know how addicting their game could be yeah um so i i think there is a little bit of a, a health precaution in uh yeah. You know, their decision making behind that. I don't know, it's it's really give or take. And I, I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below in terms mm. of uh, what, what you think about that. Okay, so you also had the opportunity to check out the Eternal Palace right. on uh, normal difficulty mm -hmm. with the guild. I know you guys haven't cleared it yet. No, we haven't. Um, first impressions, what would you say about it based on other raids that you've been to? Right, so first impression, I, I really think this is one of the stronger, more enjoyable raids. Most often times you'll see in this raid, um, leading up to a boss, the trash leading up to a boss, kind of subtly teaches you the mechanic of the boss or another oh. mechanic that you are going to see later on in the raid. Yeah. So I, I really do like that mentality and it, it's really refreshing to see. So I'm, you know, not really quite literally thrown to the sharks as opposed <laughs> to, you know, just subtly being taught of patterns that I'm going to see later on in the raid. That's a really good point. They've been doing that for a while, haven't mm -hmm. they? Like right. I've never actually made that connection. But you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. right. They do kind of subtly throw that at you. It's like, yeah. okay, here's a, a tiny element of this super complicated boss fight. Why don't you practice it a little bit? And then, like, you know, half the raid dies or something. Somebody right. explodes and blows everybody up. <laughs> right. So it is really important to help your team out and uh, clear the trash mobs. Don't dodge it. Don't join at a later time just because you want to skip trash because then you're going to miss out on an experience and BOEs and... I always go AFK during trash. I know, I know. The uh, boss battles are really well paced and well thought out in terms of their phases and the mechanics that you have to do and they definitely contribute to the storyline I, I i think a lot more than any uh, previous raid has cool so that's you know definitely enjoyable to be a part of and to see 
um, the second to last fight and then the uh, final fight with uh, Ashara, they are very complex to mm. the point of borderline being complex for the sake of being complex. That fight leading up to Ashara was so complex. I'm like, mm. I have no idea what went on. I have no idea what the mechanics were for those fight, but somehow we beat it. <laughs> <laughs> As you are aware, Normal and Heroic were released uh, last week, and uh, this week coming up, we're going to get LFR, Wing 1, as well as Mythic, which kind of leads us to our next topic of interest. We wanted to touch base on the Race to World first. So as some of you have been aware, there has been a tiny bit of drama surrounding the Race to World first event that is happening uh, this week. We're not gonna really focus too much on the drama. We don't wanna take sides. And um, at the end of the day, we just want the Warcraft franchise to succeed. Because if Warcraft does well, we all kinda do well in a way. We want the game to thrive. We're, we're fans of the game. We've been fans of the game for so long. A lot of people are upset with BFA. Why are people upset with BFA? Because they love the game. They care about the game. They want it to be a good game. More exposure to Warcraft, I think, is a really good thing. Um, I think it is great that a lot of guilds are getting involved. And I know sometimes when a third party company kind of comes in and tries to take over, yeah, that can be seen as a negative. Um, you do want to keep it community driven and focused. But at the end of the day, it is drawing more attention to Warcraft as a whole. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in this race to world first. I'm, I'm interested in seeing what the numbers are going to be like, what the viewership is. Um, maybe it's going to reach people that have not previously watched Warcraft esports. So I think it really is a good opportunity to get more people interested in Warcraft as a whole. Absolutely, well said. And I, I just wanted to add on to that, you know, um, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, the entire franchise has just been around for so long. And now all of a sudden we are really getting the spotlight shown on us. And I, yeah. I think that is an incredibly good thing for the franchise. This, this is something that could really, uh, you know, benefit all of us. So it has the potential to grow into something just so ingr incredibly bigger, power yeah. yeah powerful yeah. yeah and yeah you're right and i think we should all support each other why not uh you know method is doing their own broadcast that's awesome red bull is sponsoring their own event i think we should try to support both sides if we can because like you said at the end of the day mm -hmm. we just want to support each other in the community and for many people in our community, content creators, streamers, etc., it's a really good opportunity. Um, I know a handful of the casters who got asked to be a part of the Red Bull uh, event, and uh, I couldn't be more happy for them. Uh, a lot of them have never casted an event before, so I'm really happy for uh, a bunch of my friends who will be there. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them on the stream and uh, what they can contribute to the event as well with their own knowledge and expertise and personality as well. Some of those casters are classic content creators, so it kind of made me arch an eyebrow a little bit. Like, why are they asking people who primarily focus on classic content to cast a retail event? Does classic have the potential to go further? in terms of esports and events like this. We want to support this event, both events. We want both events to do well because, yeah, as you mentioned, it could branch off into bigger things in the future. This is only the start. Looking forward to seeing what happens. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, me too. Cool. All right, guys. Well, this marks the end of the first episode of the Warcraft Brew. I'm Quissy. And I'm Pasta Face. We hope you guys enjoyed the content in this episode. As we mentioned, this is the first episode and we're still kind of working out all the details, but we are open to feedback, suggestions, ideas, anything you guys have. Let us know in the comments below as to how we can improve the next episode and continue to grow and make this a, a regular thing. Hell yeah. Cheers. So please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, tell a friend, share it on your socials. You can also follow us on our socials below, on Twitch and Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching.